<coughs> Morning, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like I've been sitting on death row, <laughs> <laughs> waiting to get up and talk as a mining company. I just say mining company, and I know most of you love to hate mining companies, so how's your chance? You can pull out the tomato boxes and start throwing them any time you want. <laughs> However, I'm a, as passionate about what I do as what all of you are passionate about what you do. So. I'd like, I'd like, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. I, I think this is a fantastic opportunity. We haven't attended these things before, and I think it's a good thing that we do, because mining is one of those industries that I'm afraid is not going to go away. And uh, we may be the bad boys on the block, but I think sometimes it's necessary that we do dialogue with each other, understand each other's problems. You know, my union is AMCU, so you can feel sorry for me when I walk out the door. <laughs> but I actually have a fantastic relationship with them, so I'd like to say that they're not all like Marikana. What I'd like to do this morning, if I can, is to, to, to be short and brief. There's been a lot of media about the spill that we had last year. It was incorrect. Uh, we corrected that with a low felder. Um, and it's one of those responsibility things whereby I think almost half of the people sitting on the inner circle here were on my mind the day it happened. Um, I've never seen so many people rush out for an for a incident like this from the DA, who I think was probably the most vocal of the lot. Yeah to some of the people that helped us, Tabu and Derek and everybody that were there that helped us through the process and obviously took us through it and we handled it accordingly and we've done all the paperwork and <coughs> the, directives that, the directives that kept flowing in. And I don't know how many of you have come into your office without any, any knowledge and there's the SABC sitting with the camera set up and the microphone in front of you. So, so it's not always that easy and, and I think you know, sometimes it's great that we dialogue together that you understand some of the issues that we do go through. But I'm here to, I'm here to take my six cuts like I used to do when I was at school, I used to talk too much at school, I used to get hidings. I'm here to take my six cuts, but I'm also here to dialogue with everybody and show you where we are at the moment. I think it's important because people are confusing us with Barberton Mines. I just want to have two slides to explain who Vantage Goldfields is. We've definitely been under the radar for the last 25 years. This company's been in Nelspruit for 25 years. I don't know if anybody knows that. Um, We've been around, we've grown obviously dramatically over the last 25 years from a privately owned business to an Australian listed company. Um, we are the biggest <coughs> exploration holder of ground in the Barberton mountain land. And in terms of production, we may not make as much gold as Barberton Mines does because they've got a, a lovely, wealthy gold deposit, <coughs> but we produce, we put more tons through our plants than Barberton Mines, almost double what they do. So we're not, we're not a, a small little company. We've been around for a long time. And uh, yes, it's about time that we probably got involved in these kind of things. Um, out of sight, out of mind is not working anymore. And so I'm glad there's some other industries here that might support me. But as you can see here from the slide very clearly, the purple part in the middle is the Barberton Mines area. All the brown basically belongs to our company, right up to, to uh, Carps who work at the top here, through the Worcester Mines. <coughs> and the area of the, the hatched, two hatched areas here are our mining titles, where at the moment we have two operating <coughs> mines at the Barberton and Lily Mines. So, so yeah, we, we, we're a major player as a junior company in this part of the, in this part of the area, and uh, we're here to stay. Just a very quick brief, I don't want to run through everything, but you can just look down at the history of this company and the history of the mines themselves. Lillian Barbrick Mine was discovered in the 1880s. Um, 1891 production first started, and so they produced, as we go down, different companies <coughs> that held the ground. Lillian Mine purchased in 1997. We purchased the Mimco, <coughs> uh, we became Mimco. 2000, we had open pit mining at Lily Mine in particular, although we started mining in 1985 in the area here in, in, in one under the owner of Mr. McChesney, who's still our CEO, based in Nelsfrate, so we're not, a, we're not a Joburg company that works in the area, we're all low Um Underground mining license approved, Barbrook Mine was purchased, we listed on the ASX in 2010, and then AMCU decided to use us as their stepping block and to determine how big their muscles were, and they took us on a seven week strike and they nearly shut us down. Since then, we've got a very good relationship with them. Continuous growth to an average of 40,000 tons from 50, so we've grown nearly more than three times the size we are now. By 2013, this is what we've produced. 2.6 million tons has been milled through our plants, uh, about 5,000 kilos of gold, every five tons of gold produced out of our two mines. Total company employees at the moment is 830, <coughs> we were 100 just a couple of years ago. Total expenditure for our company is 406 million a year of which personnel cost us 110 million, capital stores and materials about 100 million, <coughs> capital expenditure about 88 million, and of things like power is 26. And if you do your maths quickly, for those of you that are good, the rest is not profit. 
the rest is taxation and SLPs and super tax and this tax and royalties. At the end of the day, the profit word here, which I haven't seen much of recently, but there is actually a little bit of profit <laughs> at the bottom. Just to give an example, Barberton Mines is a 10, 12 gram a ton mine. Our mine is a two and a half gram a ton mine. So it doesn't matter what tons we put through, if you've only got two and a half grams coming out of the bottom, then you don't make profit. And obviously, if you do the mathematics, we're a very cost control company because of that. Just the two important parts from everybody here, water rights. I mean, obviously, we're an old company, so a lot of our rights were old rights, uh, right back from commissioner <coughs> days in Barberton, when the commissioner in Barberton used to hand out rights. We have water rights at the moment. We have, obviously, uh, applied for a new water use license, which is sitting with DRAF at the moment and the ICMA, and we're still negotiating a few things around that water use license. And obviously, hopefully, we would like that to be approved as soon as possible, because Obviously, any licenses, whether it's your new water mining rights or whether it's water use licenses, these things affect investment into our country. It's very difficult to get investment when you're not fully licensed. So obviously, we need to handle the things that are holding up this so that we can get it as quick as possible. Land rights, we're sitting in Kangwani, or the old Kangwani. Um, obviously, it falls under the, land, uh, the Department of Land Affairs. And so, we have a very good relationship with my friend, Chief Tiko Lamini, who obviously is the custodian of all the land around the mine. <coughs> Most of anything that happens in that valley goes through the chief. So we have a very good relationship with him and the community trust that works with him. All right, let's get to the difficult part. This is just a schematic that I did uh, after the press coverage that we got, the head headlines of which disaster for the Crocodile River. I just want to point out that that kind, of, that kind of publicity is dangerous and it's probably sometimes a bit irresponsible. So, <coughs> These are the kind of things that we need to deal with, and maybe as a company that's been under the radar, we need to come up and, 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 and be there out in the open and show people. But it's a very quick schematic of where we are. The mine, this is the Sheeran Gubu Dam at the top of the mountain there, if anybody's been there, a very beautiful part of the country. The Safala Creek runs down through a waterfall and into the Lowe's Creek. Our pipeline that goes to our Slimes Dam is this, there could be Slimes Dam on the other side of the mountain there. The break obviously happens there, it leaks into the river, it went down the river. This river is almost 90% of the time diverted into an irrigation canal, of which is 23 kilometers. And when Peter's here, who is the, in charge of that water canal, and obviously the first people that will scream at us, apart from <coughs> the communities, is obviously the farmers who use the water out the canal. Thereafter, there's a dry riverbed for a couple of kilometers, and then it swells out again here, because there's a couple of drainage lines that come down here, through the Lowe's Creek, off to the Cop, and then down to Crocodile River. The total distance from us there to the Crocodile River is 42 kilometers. Ladies and gentlemen, our slimes there would have to break for a disaster in the Crocodile River. So please, all I'm saying is, you can whip us any time you like, but as long as you whip us fairly. I'm gonna take you about what happened here, because as I said, on the day of the spill, this is a dry riverbed, none of the water goes into the river anyway, it all flowed through the canal. And obviously the people who are affected by the canal are our local community. And that is the first people that we have to worry about, and it's the first response that we <coughs> have in order to make sure. Just other things that are interesting here, there are two water plants. I'm not quite sure, looking now at the, at the Inkamazi presentation we've had, they obviously don't fall in Inkamazi. We fall right on the boundary between Mjindi and Inkamazi, and I think there's often some kind of decision who actually runs the water in our area, but, but uh, we'll come to, we, we have a very good relationship with Inkamazi municipality, we've spoken to them on many occasions, and as I said on the day of the spill, I think most of the people here found their way out to the mine, including the disaster management team under Mr. Bernardi, who I have to say was very upset when he arrived <laughs> wasting his day. Okay, let me tell you what happened so that you understand what goes on in the mine. These are our slimes dam pipes that go out to the slimes dam. We're pumping probably about 60 tons a day, uh, sorry, 60 tons an hour. Add that to water, it's 120 tons because it's 50% of its water. So you've got about 120 tons an hour going through those pipes with quite high pressure. It broke, this break here happened just along the pipeline at the top there. It starts off with a tiny pinhole break and because of the velocity of the material in the pipe it eventually works its way out and you can end up as it was in the pipe there with a hole sort of soccer ball size. It, we have 24 hour monitoring, it happened at 3 o'clock on a Sunday morning. 
unfortunately the monitors weren't around and uh, obviously <coughs> thing else. we have catchment dams and it flowed into the catchment dam. The comment about catchment dams being unlined, they are unlined because that's all they are is catchment dams. They are not they are not permanent settling ponds or anything like that. They're just <coughs> catchment dams. Why are we going jumping ahead here? Um, and so you can see the catchment dam there caught caught most of the slime, but it had a break. It had a failure at the top of the dam there, and some of the slime then went down through the bush and then down <coughs> into the below into the into the cephalic, into the cephalic, cephalic ski. Um, you can see the catchment dam now, because obviously after every spill, which hopefully there won't be any more, we obviously clean out the dams anyway, that's part of the procedures, and you wait and wish and hope that no other dam, no break will happen again. There's a, a, the, the place where it flowed into the river, and I see in the latest of this magazine that was lying on our tables here, it says that we didn't clean up, or we hadn't cleaned up by the time this was written, we have obviously cleaned that up, and I think Tarby's completed his investigations there and he's written a final report to us on that okay so so that that's the done you can see the river itself it's it's very brown most of the time it comes up uh, down through the mountains there at Shield and Gubi and there's a lot of erosion that happens in those hills and 90 percent of the time it's very brown this is just to show you what happens at the canal the point of irrigation is so that the river comes <coughs> through here it gets drawn off into the irrigation canal and as you can see the rest of the river is actually a dry river bed so no water flowed past that point which is only about two kilometers from the mine and that's 40 kilometers away from the crocodile river um, the photo was taken after the spool this is the dry river bed looking up about three kilometers away looking back up towards the mine and you can see it's a very dry river bed there's not river flowing there's not water flowing down that river so the da used to be careful how they, I thought that was how a dead could. road. Sorry? I thought that was a dead road. No, that's not a dead road. That's <laughs> a dry road bit. You're welcome to come and visit me and see. So obviously, our first, our first <coughs> responsibility is to our communities. We already have our own water truck. We hired these two water trucks. And the Inkamazi uh, municipality were very kindly right there with us and, and stopped their two water plants. And they also supplied a water truck. So within a very short space of time, water is being delivered to all of the community members, which is really the main issue around the usage of that water in the canal, other than the irrigation. I did have a lot more irate farmers who came to see me to make sure, because a lot of the farmers downstream ir uh, irrigate and also export their, their, their pawpaws, and so the damage of our spill would be quite bad. <coughs> As you can see here, the two days, 16th, basically everything was above the, the accepted limits. Within two days, everything was down below the accepted limits and everything was back on track and the, and the Inkamwazi uh, municipality started up their water plants again and everybody went back to normal life again. As you can see there again, we were asked to take samples every week after that for a month and all the samples fell within the accepted limits. So, a two-day disaster. This just again was in the press that animals were killed and animals had died being sent the animals off to Honest Report None of the animals died from water ingestion. Plastic bags can cause obstruction, bloat and death to the animal. The animals had been mauled and plastic bags. It had nothing to do with water ingestion. So that, that was the incident. And yes, it's not, a, it's not something I enjoyed. As I said, I walk into my office and find the SABC already set up there without <coughs> invitation into the mine. Um, and you have to do a little bit of a presentation off the cuff. And uh, you end up on TV3. And everybody phones you and says, yeah, so you want TV? I say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be on TV with, with, uh, with in, a, in a better program. However, <coughs> I think, and this is, I'm glad the forum is here because this is the kind of dialogue that we have to have. My, our mine is the only industry in the Longshia Valley. Apart from a bit of forestry at the top, we are seen as the cash car, we are seen as the job giver, we are often seen as the solving of many problems company and we have a lot of community people who do come to our, our mine every day with all sorts of demands whether it be schools or water or roads or fencing or whatever. This is the canal on a normal day 365 days of the year. I don't want to because there's ladies involved <coughs> I don't want to tell you what that is. The, this water is filthy and it is highly polluted 99% of the time and, and this is the challenge that I think is probably more important 
but not less to what, what's the word. I mean, it's important that we don't have spills, but I think it's more important that we as a company, in conjunction with both the municipalities, look for a solution to giving the people in this area <coughs> cleaner water than what they take out of this canal on a daily basis. We do have we, we do have a monthly amount of money that we spend on local communities. People who can come to the mine and they can volunteer, and they get paid and they clean the canals. So we have got people cleaning that canal and when people will support me on that. As I said, there's 23 kilometers of canal, so there's a fair amount of canal, but we do clean it. The, the canal is filthy from lots <coughs> of reasons other than what the mine does. Um, on, on a normal day, if we don't have a spill, the mine has absolutely no influence on water in the area hardly at all. So, so this is all just from normal pollution that happens on a daily basis. What do we do for our, for our <coughs> spill to make sure it doesn't happen? Obviously we've got all these canals, all these trenches that have been dug, the full length of the, the, full length of the pipeline. And if I just show you this little schematic again, there's the mine over there. We have trenches dug all the way through the pipeline. Right through <coughs> to here we've got catchment dams and retaining walls all the way along the dam. And we've now, and I can say it with a hand on heart, put in a, a safety alarm system on our pipeline that will register any drop in pressures and set off alarms at the mine that will stop the process. So, so we have put in as many, what's the word, as many uh, obstacles as possible to having, having this to repeat itself. <coughs> and, uh, again, it's not something that any of us, the company, myself, or anybody would like to see happen again, but we are an industry and quite a big one. So once again, I just, I, I just go back to this diagram um, just to remind you that the mine is a big mine, it's a big industry, it's, it's, we're not anywhere near where we want to be. We are only about a third the size of what we intend to be in five years' time. Um, we're obviously looking to raise finance to expand our company at least three times what it is now, so there's a very good possibility that if I come back and talk to four or five years' time, and I hope it's not about a spill, we will have probably 1,500, 2,000 people working for us, and we will be a, a fairly large mining operation. Um, the river system <coughs> needs to be sorted out, the canal system needs to be sorted out, and fresh water for the communities that are growing, this valley is growing at, a, at, a, at a quite a rate, it's quite a, a pretty valley and it does attract a lot of people. Um, it's growing at quite a rate. Um, we obviously have a, a role to play with the various departments in making sure that the water systems in that valley stay clean. So yeah, in, in conclusion, I just want to remind you, we've been around for 28 years. We're not somebody that's been in this valley, arrived five, five months ago to, or five years ago to make a quick buck. We haven't been doing that. We've been there for 28 years with these people. We know the community well. We have had slips. We handle it between us all. And uh, thanks to the departments and their support, we hopefully will get better at doing what we do. And I hope that the press will also be a little bit more responsible when they come out there, or they didn't come out there, and report <laughs> on these things that somebody from a political party is using for their own benefit. So, but I am a mining man, so I say it straight. But uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here and introduce ourselves. And as industry, I hope we do dialogue a lot more <coughs> on the progress and the water progress in this area. <coughs> we have a role to play.